Hello everyone and welcome to Crumb Search, clinical research appraisal and methodology for surgical trainees, where we pick a paper fresh from the press on a hot general surgical topic. We review it for you, we present it for you, we critique its methodology for you and provide top of the field expert opinion and teaching on research appraisal and methodology. My name is Gio Perrin and together with Professor Sababala Subramanian and Maria Digby, we bring you Crumb Search from the wonderful region of the Yorkshire and the Humber. Welcome back everyone. For this episode we are going to have a look at a paper that comes from the CODA collaborative and particularly looking at the parallel cohort study they conducted concomitantly to their randomized uh, control trial comparing antibiotics versus surgery for acute appendicitis. This will not be followed by a formal teaching session, so this episode is slightly shorter, but we'll have some good critical appraisal point about the paper itself to compensate. I'll leave you to it. Lovely. So um, me and Gio have worked together and we, uh, we're going to be talking through uh, what is an observational study um, published in JAMA in uh, May, about three weeks ago um, now by the uh, CODA Collaborative. So that was 25 US um, hospitals who did a comparison of outcomes of antibiotic drugs uh, versus appendicectomy um, for appendicitis. Um, which is, I think, GIOS has previously been discussed. And we thought it was very relevant given the kind of recent um, COVID harem publications as well. So I'll let Gio talk you through the, the background and the aims a bit more. Beautiful. So, well, as I'm sure you've all come across, <clears throat> a variety of randomized control trials uh, and also now observational studies uh, have been conducted comparing antibiotics versus appendicectomy uh, and pretty much everyone nowadays when consenting a patient for appendicectomy should really mention uh, the possibility of treating this with antibiotics uh, and the uh, related success rate. Um, RCTs have been criticized for uh, potentially um, selection bias, selecting a subspecific population, and obviously uh, conducting these experiments in, in tightly controlled conditions. So the validity of those findings might not be replicable. Now, we do know from COVID harem, which we discussed back in episode 22, that there is some real life evidence that uh, um, antibiotics actually do work with similar uh, outcomes compared to what the RCTs have reported. But in this context, the CODA group um, have decided to conduct um, a parallel uh, cohort uh, study uh, to the randomized control trial. The aim of this paper is to compare the characteristics and outcomes of participants enrolled in CODA versus patients that uh, self-selected their own treatment and decided to participate in uh, this cohort study. Uh, so I'll pass the ball back to Sophie for uh, a bit more about this study. So um, as you mentioned, this was a, a parallel cohort study run at the same time um, as the randomized control trial, but this was an observational study. Um, participants were gathered from 23 out of the 25 hospitals involved in the um, CODA trial. And that was just because two of the hospitals, they had collected patients after the parallel cohort study had already um, begun um, and therefore to ensure that there was contemporaneous uh, recruitment, those two centres were um, excluded. The patients that were reviewed were all over the age of 18 um, with imaging confirmed appendicitis from the emergency department and they covered a, a period of uh, May 2016 to February 2020. Um, so patients were then offered either entry into the randomised control trial or offered a self-selection and uh, then categorised further into subgroups where they were either offered 24 hours of IV antibiotics followed by a 10-day course or an appendicectomy. And the study was designed to have a, a fixed number of um, patients within the self-selection subgroups just to ensure that they were um, truly contemporaneous with the uh, randomised control trial. I'll uh, pass you back to Gio for uh, the outcomes. Beautiful. So the outcomes the authors uh, picked for this particular cohort study are pretty much identical to the one they use in the actual CODA uh, RCT. So uh, patients were contacted at 24 hours, one to four weeks, three and then three monthly for one year and uh, 18 months and following that yearly, um, asking them the EQ5D um, questionnaire. 
EQ5D, we've discussed this before. Um, it's employed in a variety of, of studies and it's a, a quality of life related measure. It's self-reported. Uh, it's multidimensional, as you can see from the wonderful diagram that Sophie has put for us in this slide. The primary outcome of this particular cohort is EQ5D at four weeks, but obviously uh, the authors report this particular uh, questionnaire at all time points I mentioned earlier on. Uh, a variety of secondary outcomes are included, including severe and adverse events um, associated with antibiotics use or complications of uh, the appendicectomy itself, and uh, a variety of other healthcare related outcomes, such as uh, healthcare utilization, a need for surgery, and uh, need for further courses of antibiotics, days uh, lost from work or school, and general healthcare utilization uh, measures. Uh, I'll pass the ball back to um, Sophie for uh, a bit more about the results. Yeah, so um, in total, there was uh, 5,115 patients whose uh, notes were reviewed. During this time period, 1,552 were enrolled into the randomized control trial. However, as previously discussed, um, two of those hospital centers were excluded. So there was 1,094 of those patients included um, for this paper um, comparison. Um, 2,953 either refused um, participation or were not authorized, uh, were not offered um, uh, randomization or uh, trial. Um, and that was then 510 patients recruited to the, uh, the observational um, study. And in that, there was 257 who chose um, to be treated with antibiotics and 253 um, who opted for uh, appendicectomy. Um, so Gia is just going to talk a bit more about the breakdown of characteristics between those groups. Yeah, so this table is a, a reasonably brief summary of a variety of characteristics of the various uh, courts included. Um, as you can see, age is uh, relatively similar throughout. Uh, the board, uh, as well as a sort of gender distribution throughout the two cohorts. Minor differences, but pretty much as you would expect. Uh, there are some um, so, sort of uh, socioeconomic differences that are worth mentioning here, uh, particularly related to education. Um, they tend to be, um, as you can see, slightly more uh, students in the self-selection group. Uh, and there are a few uh, economic related, health, health economics related um, differences people in the self-selection group tend to um, have a commercial insurance. Uh, they tend to have slightly less concerns associated with financial consequences of their health choices, particularly in relationship to um, antibiotics versus surgery. And uh, uh, they also tend to have uh, less uh, Medicaid use. So Bob, back to you, Sophie, for a bit more. All right. Um, so then uh, looking at the outcomes, so this is a table taken from the, the paper itself, looking at comparison between the uh, self-selection and RCT um, subgroups. The primary outcome, which, um, as we mentioned, was the EQ5D uh, quality of life and um, measures, they found that grossly equal um, between all of the subsets, whether it was randomized control trial, self-selection, antibiotics or um, appendicectomy. And uh, similar as well in terms of resolution of symptoms by uh, 30 days, which was one of their secondary outcomes, although it was slightly less percentage of people who self-selected for appendicectomy, 66% said that their symptoms had resolved. Uh, one of the major differences that we did pick up reading through the, the paper and that the um, authors picked up themselves as well um, was that there is a, a difference in terms of a, a hospital utilisation and healthcare utilisation between the subsets of patients who were treated with antibiotics in that 26% um, of the uh, RCT um, subgroup required hospitalisation through the initial 90-day period after, after index treatment compared to only 11% of the self-selected cohort who'd um, been treated with antibiotics. Um, and we were uh, when we looked at this, we were curious as to why, if that's genuinely a, 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 to do with the antibiotics or to do with the patient characteristics, why is that also not reflected in the in the other outcome measures? But you is going to talk a little bit more um, about that when we move on to the limitations. Yeah, a bit more about uh, the results. Um, so <clears throat> this is quite interesting. And particularly if we look at the chart on the top left of this slide, uh, as you can see, the cumulative incidence of appendicectomy between the self-selection antibiotic cohort 
and the patients that were randomized to antibiotics in the uh, RCT is quite different. And this uh, persists uh, throughout time after the initial treatment. Um, it's very unclear to me why there would be um, such difference. And as you can see, if you look at the numerical uh, outcomes on the right hand side, uh, this is uh, quite evident both at 30 days and at one year. Uh, repeated courses of antibiotics also seem to be more common in the uh, RCT arm rather than the self-selection arm. So more antibiotics is not the reason why these patients are getting less appendicectomies. And finally, uh, in the uh, self-selection cohort, there seems to be uh, almost three times as many negative appendicectomies. So um, whenever you uh, put the appendix under a microscope and actually look at microscopic signs of inflammation, a lot of those appendicectomies are negative, which uh, again, we can't really uh, fully understand why, but we'll talk about this later on. Ball back to you, Sophie, for a bit more. Yeah, so in terms of the limitations that the um, authors self-reported, um, they did comment that the exclusion of the uh, of two of the centres which have been involved in the CODA RCT may have led to uh, some potential um, selection bias, um, although not fully clear. Um, and also the underlying participant characteristics, although um, you know certain ones were were compared, um, it may be that there's a difference between those people who are choosing to take part in a randomised control trial compared to those patients who um, decided that they would happily self-select treatment but still be part of an observational study. Um, they also commented that uh, there is relatively small subgroups once you get down to some of the, the adverse events and um, conditions which prevented some um, analysis. And one of the things that they did also comment on is that although they'd hypothesized there was potentially differences between the, the two groups in terms of characteristics, they didn't actually predetermine what would be uh, meaningful or significant in terms of the, the levels of those differences. A few more uh, things that we, we kind of thought about as we were reading through this paper. Um, so obviously we're talking about patients here uh, that are compared to each other, but are enrolled in two different studies. Um, a group of patients is enrolled in a randomized control trial and a group of patients is enrolled in an observational cohort study. Whenever patients are enrolled on an RCT, uh, physicians kind of feel, if you like, the pressure of adhering to a particular protocol, um, or, or in any case, they might alter the way they approach um, care because of, of patients being enrolled in a, a randomized control trial. I'm not sure that same degree of halo effect would apply to the cohort that was um, self-selecting to treatment. Um, so there might be some differences there. Having read both the original CODA publication uh, in the New England Journal of Medicine and this paper, I'm struggling to fully identify whether um, there were radiological interpretation differences between the self-selection group and the RCT group, meaning uh, did patients that were enrolled in the RCT group had a higher level of um, imaging review, therefore um, affecting selection, therefore reducing the negative appendicectomy rate? And does that explain the healthcare user differences? And does that explain the uh, higher negative appendicectomy rate that is observed in uh, the self-selection group? I'm not sure. Again, I can't really fully work it out, having read both uh, papers. And finally, as Sophie uh, hinted at reading through the paper, we struggle to reconcile how there is no difference in primary outcome throughout the board between patients uh, in the randomized controlled trial group and patients that self-selected antibiotics and patients that self-selected topinisectomy, when there is a clear cut difference throughout the board in terms of healthcare utilization after initial, uh, initial encounter. So patients that are treated on the RCT use more healthcare than patients that are self-select treatment. Uh, I don't understand how almost twofold difference uh, cannot translate in a quality of life question and difference. And that makes me think that either there are differences between the groups that we are not picking up or that the primary outcome that they've chosen is not adequate to pick up differences. And that does obviously have repercussion in terms of the CODA, the original CODA trial as well. Uh, but these are just thoughts, obviously, because no one, no one will have 
ever really know. Uh, the author justified that difference saying that patients are self-select tend to have a stronger belief that the treatment that they've chosen will work for them. Therefore, they will use healthcare less. And again, I don't see why that wouldn't also reflect into quality of life questionnaire, but again, uh, these are just considerations. So, ball back to you, Sophie, for some conclusions. So, uh, despite this kind of few limitations we've discussed, um, overall, you know, the, the similarities between the characteristics, the primary outcomes, and the analysis that they performed suggest that actually the self-selected cohort supports the findings of the, the randomized control trial, and that the findings from the RCT trial should be generalizable um, to a, a much wider population. And uh, we've just got a, a table there of some of the positives and, and more negatives of the, the paper that we've already discussed. So if anyone's got anything else that they'd like to share or any questions, um, I'll open up the floor. A few points that we discussed after presenting the paper, and as usual. First of all, we wondered how the authors conducted the selection for uh, patients that were included in the cohort study. We do understand based on the paper itself that uh, the number of patients included was limited by predetermined number and quarter by quarter recruitment. However, it is unclear how the selection actually happened. And this does have a lot of repercussion, not just in terms of uh, selection of patients included, but also because predetermining the number of patients included precludes us from understanding what's the real life distribution of the self-selection. That is to say, we cannot really say how many people in real life would actually choose antibiotics and how many would actually choose operative treatment. This would be quite relevant information in terms of um, healthcare planning and help us determine uh, actual applicability of the findings to our own experiences. We reiterated some points related to the use of a primary outcome that is subjective. As mentioned in the presentation, we uh, struggle to reconciliate how a primary outcome that is purely patient reported is not somehow affected by um, a significant difference in healthcare utilization between the two groups. That does have a lot of implications. Uh, the authors do try and explain this through a variety of theories, starting from the possibility of the placebo effect. However, we do feel that it is possible that the primary outcome chosen by the authors is just inadequate in uh, picking up a difference in quality of life between the two groups for this particular situation. Again, given the numerical outcomes and given that the direction of such numerical outcomes is pretty consistent um, throughout the board. It is hard to believe that such a difference in healthcare utilization would not reflect in, in a difference in quality of life between the two groups. Uh, we then moved on to discuss uh, a variety of issues associated with randomized control trials, such as uh, the creation of an artificial environment uh, with a significant halo effect, and uh, how in a lot of instances in the past, we found how uh, size or the effect detected uh, for a particular intervention on an RCT does not necessarily translate in cohort studies that are conducted after the RCT to validate the findings in real life. And we discussed how uh, this is due to a variety of reasons. We did mention a variety of other criticisms um, associated with the use of RCTs uh, as our main a source of evidence and we mentioned opinions coming from experts throughout the world uh, such as Bruce Ramshaw that sometimes are very critical towards the use of RCTs uh, in healthcare for a variety of reasons. Uh, you'll uh, find a link to uh, Dr. Ramshaw a website in the show notes uh, if you're curious about it. Uh, despite all the limitations that uh, are sometimes attached to a uh, randomized controlled trial, uh, we do still feel that RCTs are the base for the highest level of evidence um, available out there. And their role uh, in uh, clarifying uh, theories emerging from cohort studies affected by a higher degree 
uh, of selection bias is uh, invaluable. Uh, for today, we'll call it a day, and we'll see you next time with a new paper and a new teaching session. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening. Until next time, keep running your life with our surgical podcast. Mm-hmm.